Well, welcome everyone. I've got Shane here from uh, Migro, breaking apart all the lighting questions that you may have and getting to some more of the details. And this video here, we're going to dive into the effect of far red light on plant growth. Try to give you some background on this, you know, define what it is, how's it different than red light, and do we actually need it? So first question, obviously, is we've heard about red light, blue light, green light, um, previous videos, tied it into PAR, tied it into lighting in general. Now we're kind of diving into far red light. So the obvious question is, Shane, what is far red light? So we have the strict PAR uh, range, which is from blue to red. So from 400 to 700 nanometers. And um, that's what we measure as, as causing photosynthesis in plants. But just beyond red, just beyond 700 nanometers, from 700 to 750 nanometers is where the far red um, spec, uh, irradiation is. This is just about visible. You would see it if there's a far red LED, for example, uh, you would see a, a dull sort of red glow from it. Um, it's not quite up into infrared, uh, which is effectively radiated heat, um, and it does cause photosynthesis. It's not as efficient in photosynthetic terms as, for example, red, um, but it does cause photosynthesis, and it can also have an effect on plant shape. So you mentioned a little bit there about, you know, how is it, you know, it's close to red light, not quite infrared light. It's in that kind of in-between zone if you're looking at wavelengths. So how does it differ than, um, than red light um, in general there? And you talked about a little bit of how it changes the morphology. Why should we be concerned about this? Yeah, so in, in, in nature, um, uh, far red is, is effectively uh, reflected light. Um, and so if you are down in the canopy um, in shade, and below, say, for example, trees on a forest floor um, or simply in shade behind a wall in a garden. Um, you, the amount of, of far red that the plant will be receiving will be increased in proportion to if it's out of shade um, and in direct sunlight. And the reason this is significant is the plants have uh, receptors for, um, they're called phytochrome receptors, but they have receptors for detecting red and far red. And if they detect higher proportion of far red to red than is in, in, in direct sunlight, um, it is telling the plant that it is in shade and will trigger a response from that plant. And the response from that plant is to basically stretch, yeah. uh, to grow to somewhere or to move to somewhere um, where it can get an increase in light. Um, in short, if you have a high proportion of far red to red, in your grow light spectrum, you can cause plants to stretch. Mm. Uh, this can be modified or moderated by high proportions of blue, which, as we said in other videos, is um, it will 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 um, reduce plant uh, height uh, and cause sh or short and dense growth. But in summary, you know, with regards to far red, there's a lot of sort of um, excitement about it over the last year or two because it's available uh, in LED D terms. They're quite efficient. Um, they're reasonably uh, commercially viable. They're reasonably cheap to provide. Uh, but in my view, they are less efficient than the you know, red, for example, from a photosynthesis uh, point of view, and also may lead to plant stretching. So I don't recommend the um, um, don't I don't recommend that you need um, a high percentage of far red or additional far red in your grow light spectrum. Thank you, Shane. You're right. We've had gotten a lot of talk, a lot of uh, questions about it. People seeking specifically out, you know, far red because they think, oh, it's more, more light, you know, different wavelengths going to give you, you know, maybe different profiles, different, you know, reactions for the plant. But just as you had kind of mentioned there, might want to stick a little bit more with the red light uh, than the far red light because of that shade factor, perception of shade factor by those plants. And indoor growing operations, again, using the artificial lights, stretching tends not to be grower's friend. Uh, and if this is going to help induce more stretching, that could cause um, some potential issues there. But as mentioned before, look at some of the other videos. Blue light can have a counteracting effect. Um, so again, thank you for your insight on this to allow uh, growers to make educated decisions on what they choose to go with in their operation. There's one other uh, small, uh, two other small comments I'd make about far red. Uh, first is people um, have heard that maybe it can uh, cause plants to flower. Mm -hmm. and that, that it can be true in long day plants um, that, um, you know, in some cases growers use far red to stimulate flowering. 
cannabis is a short day plant, so it's not uh, it's not relevant to um to cannabis growers. And the other one is that um, far red can cause leaf expansion, so it can cause uh, more leaves and larger leaves and uh, to grow um relative to 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 lower having using lower levels of far red. And uh, that may be useful in terms of, you know, you might get a, a slight, uh, you could use it, for example, in the early stages of growth, get that canopy built up uh, slightly bigger. But I've never seen any evidence um, to, uh, to demonstrate that. And I would suspect that the benefits are, are, are small or marginal. Thanks for providing that, you know, real world, real world connection there as far as, you know, what it might do and then kind of what might be observed and kind of if you are going to use it where it might be best to utilize it in the growth stage or cycle um, of the plant. And that's, again, love having this collaboration here to provide growers with those uh, true insights so that they can hopefully choose to use it or know what they're getting themselves into, what benefits they could potentially have, but what issues they also might run into.